All right. Um, so, uh, hello. Uh, I'm Marius. I uh, represent uh, Telia today. I'm here to tell you a little bit about our story building uh, our newest TV platform. Uh, with a caution first. Um, Last time I was here, I was representing Get. We were acquired by Telia half a year ago now, but this story is only about uh, the Norwegian TV platform, not the Telia platforms at large, although we operate a lot of them in uh, the entire Norway, Nordics. Uh, now, to the good stuff. Uh, I did consider a few titles for this talk, um, from the some part uh, sci-fi inspired to a little bit more millennial, or a little bit rude, perhaps, uh, to some. However, then sobriety kicked in, and I went with something as, as boring as this one. However, uh, those others are a little bit of a hint as to where the story starts. Um, if you go back uh, three or even four years and get, we were in a, in a very difficult decision, uh, position. Uh, we had spent five years uh, creating a new TV platform with a major uh, software vendor uh, and we turned up with a product that was nearly universally disliked. Uh, it was in fact so much disliked among our, our customers that we were only able to distribute it, as was mentioned, uh, to 30% of our customers uh, and a good number of those were actively downgrading again to a platform that we launched 10 years prior to that. So, fairly this successful. Um, now we knew we had to do, do something and we were quite desperate. Uh, what you see here is the first slide of the strategy document uh, for that year. And while I conveniently uh, blurred out the, the remaining, uh, this one was definitely the, the target of, of that year. It might still be. The problem was we didn't quite know how. Uh, we were tied down in the processes of developing and operating this, this newly arrived mess, and we, we were kind of brought to a somewhat of a creative standstill in our thinking of how we should approach this problem and just looping the same old thinking and coming to the same old conclusions that have brought us into, into problems in the first place. Secondly, of course, uh, we were very dependent on this one vendor that had substantial problems of their own and couldn't really help us out of that mess. Luckily, uh, we did have a select group of, of employees that were thinking um, more in line with the previous presentation, uh, and they wanted to do things differently, thought they could do it better and come up with a better product. Uh, the, the, the principles here, I made this slide yesterday, so it's, uh, they're new, but uh, they're, I tried to articulate uh, the, the method that they applied and the principles that were, were new to them. Uh, now, the first one, that, that comes from history. Uh, through this, this previous product, it has been, had been proven to us that having all our eggs in one basket was a very, very risky uh, mission. So, in this sense, we wanted to do the complete opposite. Uh, we wanted to have no vendor lock-in at all. We wanted open standards. We wanted no proprietary technology. We wanted to take the integrator role ourselves to control the entire uh, ecosystem. And we would give no preference to the, to the big names of our technology space. Regrettably, uh, or maybe not even, uh, we were a very, very small team. Uh, we had fairly limited funds to do this, so we had to be very, uh, very focused in, in what we uh, tried to do ourselves. Uh, we could have started with, uh, you know, doing the entire thing, trying to build an encoder service or our own way of provisioning cloud infrastructure and so on and so on, but that wouldn't really transpire to values for the customer and it wouldn't really play on our strengths. Uh, our strengths at the time uh, was um, in, the, in design, in system integrations, in uh, client development. So we focused on that and tried to find uh, vendors uh, that could, could fill the gaps elsewhere. Number three, uh, and this sounds like somewhat of a, of, of a pure uh, technology statement, but it's, it's really anything but. Um, at the time we started this, we had a lot of, uh, of five, eight, even 12-year-old hardware and, and very specialized solutions that weren't really applicable to, to, to the forward world. So, uh, and, and these were also fairly uh, difficult to, to replace, uh, very costly, and they would have 
gone contrary to this principle because the only people that could replace them was the existing vendors. So we decided to, to put everything in the cloud, uh, of, of course knowing that we could insource them again, but that was a much uh, less costly exercise than starting on our on-prem solution and then going to the cloud. Uh, lastly, and this was the one that was most contested in, uh, in the organization, uh, we, we were figuring out that we were increasingly competing with software companies. However, we were applying the methods that had made uh, telcos successful, the, the, the big procurement cycles, the waterfall processes, and uh, all of that. Uh, now, going through this, we didn't want to do that at all. We wanted to do it in an agile manner. We wanted to do experimentation. We wanted to do uh, incremental building of the product. So, so yeah, that was, uh, that was very important to us. And I could have skipped this slide, uh, telling you that, yeah, yeah we, we got full acceptance of that, multi-year funding, and yeah, go ahead, uh, experiment your heart out. But um, it would have been somewhat of a lie. Uh, <laughs> The, the, the problem, of course, uh, what, uh, was that while we knew as a company that we had to do things differently, uh, the proposed plan was, um, was deviating so far from the, the normal operations of the telco that it, it, it was plainly unacceptable. Uh, it was a very, very, very frustrating time for the team as well, because the team believed they knew the technical solution, but we came to the realization that the, the problem at hand wasn't really to find the technical solution, but to instill a, a cultural change in a very mature organization. Uh, and we, we struggled with this for months. Uh, but, um, but in the end, uh, we got to go ahead to, to create a proof of concept, uh, myself and uh, the Rix TV gentleman uh, now, uh, with the same haircut as me, I saw you previously. <laughs> Got the, the, the gen generous allocation of um, 400,000 Norwegian crowns, uh, or 40,000 euros, uh, to create an uh, entirely new um, TV platform with all the, all the bells and whistles that, that comes with that. Uh, now, ha had you told me this today, I would have largely told you that that is impossible. Uh, but at the time, we were very enthusiastic and, and fairly naive in, uh, in our endeavor. So we accepted that and, and moved forward. Um, Interestingly, we weren't all wrong. So, so this, is, um, this is the architecture that we, we panned out. Um, I won't go through this because uh, you know, most of these are now uh, replaced by something else, but it, it does hold true to our principles. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, there, there is no central party here. There's, there's no enterprise vendor that is responsible for the different things here. We, we did all the integrations ourselves and we did handpick uh, uh, the vendors that we thought were most applicable to fill a singular role rather than the entire ecosystem. Secondly, uh, apart from uh, the very uh, physically bound services, uh, all of this is hosted in the cloud, either through, through our own cloud uh, infrastructure or through uh, vendors offering uh, cloud services. And of course, no procurement involvement, but that's beside the point. Um, and it didn't look, look half bad either, I'd say. Uh, we, we launched this internally uh, just before Easter that year, uh, within our four-month time frame and within our 400,000 budget. And it, it, it did have, it wasn't sexy, but it did have uh, the, the required features. We could, we could browse movies, we could uh, go into, this was just before Easter, so that's a Norwegian word for... Easter crime, which doesn't make sense in English, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it, it could uh, could do the basic operations. Uh, yeah, there's a episode browsing and a TV guide over there. Yeah, and this was even um, this, this I made this actually. This was our first stab at making a Android TV uh, launcher. I just made that. Yeah, horribly coded. It was my <laughs> my doing. <laughs> But, uh, but it did prove that even with, uh, with a very small and very poorly funded team, you could even go into the set box space and uh, create something that was uh, questionably valuable uh, there. Now, uh, good or bad, uh, we didn't launch that platform. Of course, it had numerous technical defects that wouldn't, wouldn't allow us to use it for, for real customers, but it did prove the point. 
Uh, and having done that, we uh, we got some additional funding and uh, some uh, a very much more ambitious target. Uh, this is about half a year later. Uh, we were still in in beta, as you can see up here, uh, but it had grown into a a, a much more uh, customer friendly uh, platform, in, both in features and design. Uh, and uh, it, it allowed us to kind of consider this as a, as, as a competitor to what we already have in the market. Um, it was still fairly basic, though, and only available on the web, but it did, did allow us to, to transpire into, in, into a continuous learning period. Uh, that was very useful. We know from the start that we wanted to have this ongoing dialogue with the customer and, uh, and consider both their point of use in regards to to qualitative feedback and also through observations of, of service quality and, and customer behavior. Uh, this is a, an example of that. Um, so in, instead of actually creating a search feature, we, we would rather just create a search icon and uh, monitor how many people were actually trying to use it. Uh, and, uh, and that philosophy was, was with us throughout the entire life cycle of the product. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the same, just a visualization of the click ratio. Uh, and based upon that philosophy, we created, uh, well, any number of, uh, of features which is available today. This is uh, our favorite section where you can, could select favorites from channels and, and shows and series. These are some of our sports and team modes. This is for the Norwegian uh, Soccer League. This is for the Tour de France. This is a foodie selection, uh, Olympics, a lot of these. Uh, created our own sections uh, for, for, for my content and uh, continue watching and such. We created a, a nifty little intro feature that would kind of help you onboard into to new features that we made. We introduced full catalog catch-up support. Uh, we reviewed, uh, you know, how many times you would or customers would sequentially watch episode, and based on that, we made an auto skip feature. We made multi-channel NPVR, uh, also multi-season NPVR. Uh, we introduced uh, some dynamic filtering options. We introduced TVAD. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the list goes on here. Uh, related content, uh, machine learning, and many, many, many more features and. UI improvements that we are, are still doing now. Uh, however, of course, uh, a TV product is a little bit limiting if it's only available on the web, so we had to, to stretch that. This is, is our first uh, try at that. Uh, this is for, for phones and tablets for uh, iOS uh, and Android, uh, natively developed, of course. Uh, ultimately, no, we, we knew at the time that this wasn't really what the customers wanted. They wanted a first screen experience, so... Uh, so a few weeks later than that, we introduced um, Chromecast and AirPlay support. Um, <laughs> we, we did have some problems with that on the, on the web. Well, we did have problems at any stage here, <laughs> to be too, too honest. But, uh, but this was, uh, it, it, it worked out. And, uh, you know, having proven ourselves sequentially through, through our senior management, we, we at the time we, we launched this, we, we did have the possibility to have uh, a sizable international organization that was working in parallel on a lot of uh, different uh, features and, uh, and platforms. Uh, a bit after that, we, we launched our true, first true uh, uh, first screen experience with, with Apple TV. Now, in retrospect, I'm very happy that we did uh, Apple TV before uh, trying to make a, a setup box. Uh, it allowed uh, yeah, primarily our, our design team to, to figure out how to work with a first screen experience and, and learn from that. Uh, after all, there is a somewhat of a difference of navigating with this rather than on a, uh, on a phone, tablet, laptop. So, so that, that, that was very valuable for us. Uh, interestingly, this was also where our, our growth kind of picked up. Uh, introducing this, we, we were monitoring customer growth on a weekly basis uh, at the time. And uh, for many, many weeks after doing this, we uh, had double-digit growth uh, within our customer base. Ultimately, though, uh, we had to do uh, a set-up box. Uh, we announced this in, uh, in January. 
Uh, and uh, Henke, you were nice enough to send us a cake. Stay here. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it is important to us, though, to, to, to say that this, this is not merely Android TV. We have spent a lot and lot of time uh, developing this into our product and not Google's product. And uh, we, are, we, are, we have released it to the wild now, and it is gaining traction. Um, we have about 20,000 customers on there now and growing those volumes every day. So, so yeah, it looks promising. Let's see. Um, the thing to take home, though, is, is not about uh, the, the features that we created or, or the features that we didn't create, uh, but the philosophy that, that drove the change and to, to, to drove our decisions to make what we made, which is very important. And that process, of course, is, uh, is driven by people. Uh, people has been the, the, the one thing that, uh, that has made this possible. And, uh, also, to, to which a lot of you in the room here, I am very grateful to have, have worked with for the, for the past few years. Uh, I do feel now that the, the, the child has, has grown up in a way, uh, that we, you know, it had a very challenging childhood and a, a even more challenging adolescence, I suppose. But, but now it is, uh, it's becoming a, a stable platform and a modern platform that we think can uh, prove uh, useful for the Norwegian, perhaps even the Nordic populations for more years to come. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.